sponge cake, eels, and homebrew. Did you see where your grandfather went, dear? Down the garden. Did he take his wheelbarrow? I didn't see. Your legs are younger than mine. Run and have a look in the shed. See if it's where he stands it up against the wall. It's not there, Granny. The wheelbarrow. Hmm, thought so. What's the matter? As soon as that man disappears with his wheelbarrow, I know he's up to no good. Why? You're too young to remember the time he disappeared down the street with his wheelbarrow, came back with it, full of eels. Eels? That's what I said, didn't I? There used to be a creek down the end of the road. The council put it underground a few years ago. Well, your father and that friend of his, Mr. Humdrum, they set a hinaki in the creek, and your grandfather brought his wheelbarrow home full of eels. Nasty, slippery and slithering things with their horrible little eyes looking at you. Did you eat them? I told your grandfather, don't think you're bringing those slimy things near my kitchen. I'm not having them wriggling around in my frying pan. So he built himself a smokehouse. The smell was enough to make a body sick. It went on for days and days, your grandfather reeking to high heaven of smoke and eels, and that friend of his with a squeaky voice coming round with his wheelbarrow and disappearing down the bottom of the garden. What, with more eels? Bringing more and taking away the smoked ones. They didn't tell me, but I knew what they were up to. Raffling them off in the pub. Then the neighbours complained about the smell. Your grandfather and his no good friend of his were busy running up and down the street, giving smoked eels to everybody to shut them up. Did that stop them? Well, they stopped complaining, but then your grandfather thought of something else. What happened? In those days, a dear old Mrs. Kennedy lived across the road, where the Marshalls live now. I thought they always lived there. Not then. Well, I like to bake a sponge for old Mrs. Kennedy. It was one of the few pleasures she had left. Poor old thing. I made a lovely one, and she was delighted. I couldn't eat my slice, but she gobbled hers down and declared it was the best she'd ever tasted. Then she had another. And another. She said I had wonderful hands with sponges. She tried making them all her life, but never seemed to get them light enough. I said it was all in the mixing but she was sure it was something to do with the eggs. They were much richer than hers, she said. They gave the sponge a beautiful flavour. Why couldn't you eat your slice? It smelt of smoked eels. That grandfather of yours had been feeding them to his chooks. I didn't dare tell Mrs Kennedy what the flavour was. What else did he do with his wheelbarrow? He made homebrew down the bottom of the garden. That's what he did. What's homebrew? Homemade beer. I saw him disappear down the garden one day, pushing his wheelbarrow. Hello, I said to myself, what's that man up to? I kept an eye on him, and saw he was barrowing clay up to his veggie garden, digging it into the topsoil. Where did it come from? He dug an underground hut and made home brew down there, he and that Mr. Humdrum. They used to drink the smelly stuff and sing in their dugout, till every dog on the street started howling. I tell you, as soon as I see that grandfather of yours with his wheelbarrow, I know he's up to no good. He built the road from Auckland to Wellington with the wheelbarrow and his false teeth, Granny. Yeah, and look what a mess that made. Why don't you just ask what he's doing? He'd like that, wouldn't he? No, it'd be much better if you were to go and see what he's doing. Come back and tell me. I walked down the garden whistling, as Granny had told me. There were still lots of plums, so I picked and ate some. That's when I saw Grandad, hat over his face, fast asleep. He was sitting in his wheelbarrow, so I tilted up and held him up into the sun. I didn't want to wake him and think I was spying, but I swallowed a plum stone and made a bit of noise coughing it up, and when I looked again, Grandad had disappeared. He was asleep, Granny, I told her. Down the bottom of the garden, with his hat over his eyes and lying back in his wheelchair, like it was a big, comfy armchair. Didn't I say he'd be up to something, said Granny. Can't trust that man at the best of times, let alone when he sneaks off with his wheelbarrow.